held a budget workshop at 6 p.m. in City Council Chambers on January 17, 2013. Members present were Lincoln Meyer, Davies, Crowley, Eckhart, and Harms. Absent was Hogaback. Also present were myself, City Manager Ron Dunn, and Public Works Director Doug Todd. Council heard funding request presentations from outside agencies for the 2014 fiscal year. Karen Mitchell, Director of Franklin County Economic Development, gave a presentation with a request for the funding to remain the same as the current fiscal year at $45,000. Kim Bell Manning, Anthem Library Director, gave a presentation with a request for an increase of $5,000 to a total of $85,000. Mary Lee Jenke, President of the Hampton Senior, Senior Center, gave a presentation with a request for continued funding of their organization with no specific dollar amount requested. Eric Christensen, Main Street Hampton Facade Grant Program, gave a presentation with a request for an increase in funding from $5,500 to $10,000 for the upcoming year. Brooke Bendler, Greater Franklin County Chamber of Commerce, made a presentation requesting the funding to remain at $12,000 for the upcoming fiscal year. Larry Fanny, Director of Franklin County Alcoholism Service Center, gave a presentation requesting funding to remain at $13,000 as it is in the current year. Council then reviewed current funding levels of Franklin County Historic Commission at $250, Municipal Band at $6,900, and staff proposed that the newly formed tree board would be allocated a funding of $1,000 out of the parks budget. Council concluded this meeting and met again on Monday, January 21st, 2013. That meeting took place at 6 p.m. here in City Council Chambers. Members present at that meeting were Lucan Meyer, Davies, Crowley, Eckhart, Harms, and Hogaback. Also present were myself, City Manager Ron Dunn, Public Works Director Doug Tarr, and Police Chief Bob Schaefer. Council heard a budget proposal from Ron. The proposal included a balanced general fund budget and an 80 cent reduction in the overall levy due to a reduction in the employee benefits levy in order to use up some accrued fund balance in the employee benefits fund. The proposal included no increases in outside agency funding. Jeff Jansen, Hampton Youth Baseball Commission, made a request for commission access to city fuel for mowing the ball diamonds. Brooke Bemler, Eric Christensen, and Lisa Schatzer encouraged the council to increase funding to, design, to the Design Committee's Facade Grant Program. The council discussed many aspects of the budget proposal and will discuss further details at its next budget workshop to be held immediately following the January 24, 2013 council meeting. The council concluded this meeting at 7.42 p.m. And that's where we are tonight. Is there any public comment at this time? Okay, saying no, we will move forward. Next on the agenda, we have uh, Jason Gooder here to address the council uh, regarding access to city property for snowmobiles. Hi, Jason. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hey, Jason. Good. I bought some maps on here. I'm going to just pass them on to uh, I guess I'm, I'm here tonight. Uh, we've had some requests from uh, some users on the bicycle trail. On uh, There's walkers out there that want to keep the trail open during the wintertime so they can <clears throat> walk walk on the trail. And I guess myself, I'd like to try to entertain that and, and keep it open for them. And then, uh, but we also got to try to maintain the corridor for snowmobile users also. Um, so if you take a look at your maps there, uh, that blue line on the north would represent a proposed uh, snowmobile trail. Uh, the Iowa River Riders actually came to me and proposed the idea and then uh, basically they come off Olive and then skirt along that road and then end up back on the bike trail. Um, but where they, where they come back to the bike trail, I could actually have them groom an uh, actual dual corridor so they could stay off of the asphalt uh, where that point comes into the red line there and then continue on east. and. Um, that would allow us to keep that asphalt portion open through town for people to, to walk on in the snowmobilers and be able to stay to the north on the corridor and have a green trail there. Um, uh, Gary was going to come along with me to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the snowmobile club and, and how they're tied into the, the state snowmobile association and when it comes to insurance things. And, and <clears throat> as a club, when they mark a trail in the county, as long as the trail is marked, the, uh, all, all riders, whether they're club members or not, are, are covered under the state uh, snowmobile association's umbrella. So there wouldn't be any liability or anything you know, responsible for the state. Uh, 
we have one memorial bench already in place. Yeah. And uh, would that potentially have to be, if you're going to be fair or right, Side by side with the blacktop, would that maybe a new pad? Well, we, we, we have the your turn, <coughs> right? Yeah, right. Uh, we looked at that. Uh, currently, there's enough room, but uh, the plan would be to probably move that bench, you know, just for safety concerns and allow uh, just a for bigger gap there. But uh, right now, there, there is enough room for them to get by. the benches that would be placed then we'd have to take we'd have consideration. To right. Yeah. Any other questions for Jason? I think this is a great idea. And if you do have this trail groomed, Jason, it also gives them the, the opportunity to see where they're supposed to be. Right, exactly. Instead of being on the yeah. trail. And, and that's, that's kind of yeah, the that's kind of the theory behind it. Um, you know, we figure if we can maintain that that asphalt surface to keep it open. But, I mean, just, just, to, just for pure enjoyment of riding, you're not going to want to cross over and get on that asphalt. So, I mean, not saying that it's going to, or it's not going to happen, it probably will, but it's, it's probably less likely if we can show that this is where the swing is supposed to be. We'd like them to be. Are you going to put trail markers up? Yes. Well, it, that would be under the responsibility of Snowball Club. Yeah. Yeah. And then that, where it, uh, that section there where it ties back into the bike trail, uh, that's county property there. We would, we would, we would uh, facilitate that gap through the trees. Yeah. So would, would you be planning on, to keep it open for walking, would you be planning on, uh, as you can, um, after each snowfall, just uh, running a... a well, we got a, we got a ranger, a six by six quarters ranger with a snow blade on it. Which we've been, so we used to, to plow snow. Yeah. Unless we got, you know, unless it got to the point where it's too deep and we got snow break on the truck, which would be too deep. I guess ultimately what I was thinking of, if, if you were going to make that effort, to, whether um, uh, an effort by the city should be made to continue to keep the path open all the way to the fitness center. Well, I mean, that's, that's definitely a thought. That's theirs. But it's, that, that's ours too. All the way to the fitness center? Yeah. And there's been there's been talk and discussion about that too, and I think uh, you know there's definitely a, there's a certain amount of users that would, would use it and utilize it. So. If we had snow, would there be uh, <laughs> cross country skiers that would be opposed it, it, to you? Oh, keep clearing, cleaning the snow off well, the trail. Well, uh, what we found in our other parts is we've got we've got snow building allowed in uh, WKW and, and Robinson, and we used to groom those. And I'm not a cross country skier, but uh, usually what the cross country skiers do is they go right on the snow and build pads. So. My biggest concern was liability issues. you reach the stockpile site, the ball diamond driving area is basically public property right now, but beyond that, um, going back to the stockpile site is typically hasn't had access to the public, you know, and so we could try it, and if there's issues with anything, we could readdress it even, but yeah. <clears throat> anticipate any of it. Right. The only thought I had about any of that too, Ron, is back in the other stockpile site is about where's that going to be in relationship to that proposed tower? Well, the tower would sit north of the north, north trail, right? This tower would sit north, kind of on the north side of that stockpile site, the, the Bromish. That should, shouldn't be a problem. Okay. And you know, we can always stab the Stone Bill Club, lay out their trail signs, and you know, if Doug or somebody want to take a look at it. You know, make suggestions of how they're going to be able to prove the trail one way or another, you know, slightly. I'm not sure they'd be open to that. Do they have any speed limit signs to remind them to speed limit through town? It'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably won't have to worry about it this year. No, I'll yeah. Any 
any other questions or comments for Jason? Thanks, Jason. Thank you. This time, I guess we'd entertain a motion. Uh, I think we're looking for access. So. I'll second. A motion by Craig and a second by Jim to approve access for the snowmobiles. Any further discussion? I think it's a good idea. <coughs> Anything else? Yeah. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Next on the agenda is consideration of approval of pay estimate number five to Heartland Asphalt Incorporated for work completed on the Progress Park Improvements Project in the amount of $7,847.96. And I do believe I see Mindy here to address the council. Hi, Mindy. Good evening. So this construction pay estimate number five is um, basically just finalizes all of the items on the park um, portion of this project. And um, so the next two that you'll see are just releasing the teenage, but is there any questions on this particular one? Discussion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next is consideration of approval of pay estimate number six. This is the final pay estimate to Heartland Asphalt Incorporated for work completed on the Progress Park Improvements Project in the amount of $7,750.21. Any questions on that? Yeah. Basically, this is just releasing retainage after all the punch list items were completed. And moving to the second project, I guess, later. Okay. I have a motion to uh, approve the uh, final pay estimate number six. So, okay. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Dick and a second by Val to accept the final pay estimate number six. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next is consideration of approval of pay estimate number four, the final pay estimate to Heartland Asphalt Incorporated for work completed in the Progress Park Tennis Court, Basketball Court, uh, Basketball Court and Skate Park Pavement Improvement Project in the amount of $5,364.63. Anything to add there? Yeah, I actually will talk a little bit on this one um, briefly. Um, this also includes uh, everything after the punch list items, and you may notice a, a, a credit on a couple items on there, um, and that was basically um, due to the small ponding that's occurring in the basketball court. Um, that's what that credit is, is for. We had a question, I, and maybe Doug addressed this, but we had a question on the tennis course as far as the uh, tightening straps available there really wasn't any appropriate device that was sent for the uh, tightening me mechanism for the, for the nets uh, Doug, I, I'm just not recalling was that covered in our contract that was an owner that was an owner purchase so that's got nothing to do with Heartland that's on us and uh, we the straps didn't come with the units that we purchased uh, but we, since then we purchased straps but uh, Come to think of it, I haven't seen them yet, but I think we ordered them. So I know we'd had some on order. I know we inquired about ordering them. Yeah. Um, the center straps you're talking right. about. Right, the tightening straps. Yeah. Um, and also, did you get reels? Yep, yeah, I got the reels. I okay, and also that. then we had the reels, at least the cranks on those replaced. Um, but as you mentioned, those are owner purchased items, so it's kind of separate from the hard one stuff that we're hoping we get all that. Okay, thank you. Mindy, I have a, I have a question. Yes. Um, the first tennis court's got a crack in it already. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, the, the 
West Tennis or the East Tennis East. Courts? Yes, I have seen that. Um, it, as you may recall, with that, with those two courts, um, what we did was just do surface repair only with some sealant, and then they put the acrylic paint over that. Um, at one time, we had talked about trying to put in a patch through that specific crack down the center in the construction documents, but then they came back and basically gave us the feedback that we would then just have two cracks on either side rather than the one in the middle. Um, I was certainly hoping that that was going to last more than the first time. So that is along with the net side, isn't it? I mean, it's just in the center there of the net. Was that where it was? Right, it's just down the center, the center of the nets, and that's a common place for cracks to occur on tennis courts. Right. Sometimes you'll saw cut a, a clean cut, just let it be open there um, for a little bit of expansion room. Um, we have you know, talked about that a little bit. Um, I talked with Doug and Ron about it a little bit. I looked at it when I was out here looking at tennis court cranks. Um, I guess as far as a um, a maintenance type item. There is a, they do have a bond, a maintenance bond on, on the project, and I can go back and review that to see if that's covered under that. Um, but essentially, the crack is quite wide, and I think it's just difficult for them to, to get it filled in without probably doing a total reconstruction of that surface. You're probably going right. to have that happen. So. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or comments? to approve the uh, pay estimate number four. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have a vicious animal hearing regarding a dog bite incident involving dog owned by Tyrell Bellman and Starwell Mayfield at 318 4th Avenue Southwest in Hanson. And I'll call on Police Chief Schaefer then at this time to review the uh, particulars of this incident. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, and Manager. Um, on the 19th of January, at approximately 8.02 uh, p.m., uh, the Police Department had received a report uh, from the complainant, Darshan Miller, who lives at 321 Third Street Southwest, that uh, an officer was needed at a residence, advised her neighbor's dog just killed two more of their rabbits. Uh, officer Morrison, and I believe it was a reserve officer, um, Dave Hogger responded, and uh, Officer Morrison advised that the doctor that the dogs, and there was two of them at the time, were acting very aggressively towards the officers. Uh, 33 was able to make contact with the dog's owner, Tyrell Barrowman. Um, 35 and 3512, uh, the deputies with the sheriff's office also assist, assist, assisted at the scene. Um, the dog's name is Atticus, and there was photos taken of the rabbits in the cage of which uh, City Manager Ron Dunn has a photo to pass around. I think they're, I think they're pass around. <clears throat> um, there was one rabbit that was alive at the time, and um, what had happened, and then there was a wounded one that was taken to the vet center. Uh, the second later, the rabbit later died. Um, as you can see, the bottom of the cage was actually torn open for the dog to get at the rabbits. I do have statements, and I believe you also do in your packets from the owners, along with, I believe, a daughter of hers that lives at the residence that was a witness to this, um, that actually saw the dog with the rabbit in its mouth, uh, the first one anyway. Um, and then um, from that point, um, basically the dog was taken out the pound confined and um, Mr. Barrowman was given a citation for dog at large. He does have a current city license. Um, excuse me, Starla Mayfield, the dog is in Starla's name. Starla does have a city license and the dog is uh, also up to date on shots. This mentioned the first incident. Do we have a, another incident reported? 
In December, if, if you look in the packets, I believe that there is a another CR, and it might have been before. Looks like a warning in the warning book. Yes, um, but there was. I just I thought I just saw that. Maybe I. There was another CR on the. Yes. There was one on 12-24, and then there was one on January 12th. <clears throat> on January 12th, um, there was a dog loose, and um, I believe Officer Morrison was also the one that uh, responded to that and had, um, had warned Tyrell about the dog being loose. And then there was one on December 24th um, that we had a complaint from the same person that had complained about the, the rabbits being killed, um, that the neighbors across the alley in the White House have three dogs, one of which is always getting loose. Uh, the advised the dog comes in the yard and has killed a rabbit, which is one of her kids' 4-H project. We never had a report of that. Uh, and if you look in the statement from, <clears throat> excuse me, the mother, um, I think she said that that occurred like in October. Uh, we have no you know, we have no report or any, you know, any proof of that. Um, and it's been going on for some time and she's tired of it. Described the dog as a bulldog and then advised that it's a big dog, doesn't know the owner's name. Um, that particular complaint wasn't followed up on because somewhere along the line it got missed and I was not advised of it. I was the one working at the time um, and actually I don't think there was anything going on at the time other than the fact she wanted to report that's always loose again and, and wanted something done about it. I do have two letters, one from her son and one from her, in reference to this, if at any time that somebody would like to have those read, otherwise you do have copies of those also. So we don't know on the first incident where the allegedly the rabbit got killed, how it got to the rabbit. We don't know that. Right. Okay. Basically what we're here for is what you know actually took place that day um, or that night. We do have proof that the dog has been loose prior to this. Are there any previous citations for the dog at all? No, there was, yeah, there was a warning put in the warning book. We, which is customary, if, you know, it only happens once or twice. We don't necessarily go and, and give them a ticket right away. I did note in a report, though, too, Chief, that one of your officers said the dog did act aggressively towards him, and that kind of concerns me. Yes. Um, and honestly, what they told me, which is not in this report, to the point where they actually had one of the weapons pulled and and was either going to tase it or, or shoot it if it was going to start out towards them. Okay. Did you want to read the letters in the, for the record? Or if you would like me to read them, I would go ahead and do it this time. Yes. The, record. Okay. the first one is from uh, the boy that, that has the rabbits, and uh, his name is Casey Feldman. I am writing this letter to let you know how I felt about the dog killing my rabbits. I was very upset that my rabbits that I had bought as babies and took care of to this day died for no reason besides a dog getting loose and wanting to get to them. It was my job to keep them alive, safe, beaten warm, and I failed to do that. I didn't keep them safe from a dog. The rabbit's names, you must have names for them, Caveman and Corinthian. Uh, were my breeding pair of California rabbits that I had planned to breed for summer bunnies for the fair of a pen of three. I'm very angry at the dog for doing this and upset at the owner for not making sure the dog couldn't leave their yard. Now I have to start over, save money, and buy more. I hope I can do this in time to have rabbits to show at the fair. Second letter was from his mother, and I might add, um, I did ask if she could be here tonight, and she has a job and works. 3 to 11 or whatever it is, and would not, was not going to be able to be here. Um, and the son didn't want to be here without without her being here. So, 
Um, this was is from the mother. I would like to know. I would like you to know that I'm very disappointed in this whole situation. In the long run, no one is going to win, and both sides are going to have a loss. I just need to express my feeling about it all. My son is not always a good boy. He has gotten into trouble with the law a few times, and I finally found something for him to do with his time instead of getting into trouble. He works for the money for his rabbits, mowing lawn, doing extra chores uh, for here at home and other family members, um, hoping to be able to buy good show rabbits. He paid $45 at the Allison Fair open show for his Holland Lop, and he paid $50 for his female Californian at the Waverly Swamp Meet and $20 for the male Californian at the same place. For young rabbits, he fed, watered them every day, cleaned pens once a week. Before it got cold, um, before it got cold, I'm having a hard time now that it got cold and it's hard to get him to clean under the pens once a week because he still goes out and feeds and waters them and makes sure that they had straw to stay warm. I was mad when I saw the dog attacking the rabbits. Then the heartbreak to see my son cry because all the hard work that he and his loving pets he loved are gone. He even worked at a farm for a few hours to work off the pen uh, that he had that he had them in. Now they are beyond fixing and needs two more pens uh, before he can even get more rabbits. I feel bad for both sides, my son and the neighbors. Both sides are going to have a loss. For a mother to see her child's heartbreak was way too much to bear every night he brings in the one that I left for a few hours to just make sure that Thumper is safe. It will take him time to get over the feeling of his loss of the rabbits and trying to keep them alive. Bob, are there any questions for, from the council this time for Chief or comments? I know Tyrell and Starlin family are here. You guys want to yeah, address the council? I just want to say that I sympathize with the mother about losing a, watching her child lose those rabbits and all the hard work he, he did. And I want to um, start out by apologizing to everyone that has been affected by this incident. Our neighbors, the police department, our children, we take full responsibility for our dog Atticus's actions, we realize now that we have to take, that we have to take more better actions to keep our dog in our yard and we plan to build a kennel outside or a fence in our yard to keep them better contained. Uh, we are sorry for our neighbor's rabbits and that Atticus barked and growled at the police. We realized her actions that night could have made her look very vicious, but she's not. If you can know Atticus, you would know she is far from vicious. She's a loving, caring, smart dog. She has never bit anyone. In fact, in the summertime, she plays with all the neighbor kids. Um, what she did to the neighbor's rabbits was a big surprise to us because she has been around animals like that before. Um, live chickens and dogs, our daughter Zamira uh, does for 4-H also. And uh, she's been around birds that uh, my kids got at Christmas time and they fly all around her and she's never nipped at them or anything. She doesn't do anything. So this incident was a very, very big surprise to us. And uh, my sister has two cats, and the first time she met them, she tried to play with them. I mean, it, basically what I'm trying to say is please give Atticus and us a second chance. We don't want to lose our family member over one incident. And I promise you, you, we, you won't regret it. We won't have any further incidents. From here on out, we will do everything we can to contain her. She's not a vicious dog, I promise. And I, I feel for the mother, that child. He did a lot for those rabbits, and we plan on going and talking to them. We did try to find them rabbits, but we can't find any right now. We went over there today. They weren't home. 
So we do plan on buying them some rabbits, maybe a new cape, whatever they need. It's not going to replace his heartache. For one instant, please don't make my family go through that heartache. We do sympathize for her and her child. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I just want to say that we never received the first notice. If we had received the first notice, it would have been dealt with right away. All we got was loose chain that Thursday before this incident happened. I thought I had the chain fixed. I didn't have the chain fixed. I'm going to build a kennel as soon as the ground freezes. I'll go out there with a blowtorch and blowtorch the ground and put them in with the backhoe. Whatever I got to do to keep my dog. So sorry for everybody. And I really hope we can keep our dog. Thank you. Thank you. Move to council discussion now. Your council thoughts. I made one phone call to uh, uh, Beth that uh, handled the dog, and you said that no, it's not a, it's not your loving, laughing dog at all. Um, but um, doesn't didn't feel that it was an ambitious dog. I am um, the incident of the first rabbit being killed. Um, I guess this seems to me to be the first one. I. I would propose that um, uh, by virtue of um, the Barrowman's um, replacing rabbit, the cages, uh, getting all the uh, getting all the uh, fencing and, and chain in place that they uh, need get in place in order to keep the dog restrained, that would give it a second chance. But uh, not until those things happen should the dog come back to Hampton that they find an alternative home port outside Hampton and if these other criteria are met, um, then we give the dog a second chance. Um, the, the dog, okay, in itself is an animal. So it came from a wild animal at one time, okay? When it attacks and, and kills another animal, that's just its normal hunting instinct. Okay? I don't care whether it went around the rabbits and the cats or whatever, but for whatever reason it decided it wanted dinner off those rabbits, and that's a terrible thing. Yes, that. it is. That's the only thing is we asked the vet, we go, did she have to taste the blood? Was there any blood? She's, he told us there was no blood. He checked for the broken back. He said the back legs moved yet. I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. That's, and well, unless you were there, I'm, you won't. Exactly. But. What I'm saying is once the propensity, once they've done such an act, propensity for them to repeat is there. Again. I understand that. So if that happens, we'll have no choice. Absolutely. We totally understand that and respect that. Okay. I look at it a little differently. Uh, this dog apparently has been loose several times at least two instances that we know of. Uh, I guess it, it really bothers me that this animal would kill two rabbits, whether there was blood on it or not, Tyrell, I don't know, I wasn't there either, but what even concerns me more gravely is that it threatened an officer or that it acted aggressively to an officer. That Probably just another few more minutes they could have killed the dog on the spot and been rightfully justified. They all mentioned that several times that night. And uh, I'd like to commend our Chief Schaefer's officers are using great constraint because that can be pretty harrowing right there at the moment of uh, that. You know, if the dog's killed some animals, they've seen it. Who knows what's the mindset of the dog? But uh, uh, I want to see how this vote comes out if there's a, a motion and a second first, and then we'll go from there. Are there any other comments before we get to that? Well, um, one thing I'd like to comment since I've been in your situation. And it's just so important. You know, I'm, I'm with Steve. The fact that the, you know, and I'm not an avid dog lover, but the fact that the dog did kill, you know, I, I agree. I think Dick has a good point. If we put all these things up into place, then the dog can come, you know, back. But you have to be very, very I mean, you can't let the dog get loose. And I know how quick they are. I know how they get out the door and stuff. But, I mean, this is. 
a scary situation. Yeah, we all know. Yeah. And I do, I do understand that you do know it, but it just concerns me with the rabbits and if the little boy had been out there and the, the aggression the dog showed towards the officers. Oh, yeah, and I know they're protective of their home, but the fact. She wasn't at home. I also am a dog owner. I've had dogs, well, ever since we moved to Hampton. And uh, I was house sitting, uh, dog sitting for my daughter. And he pulled a corkscrew, the lab, black lab, pulled a corkscrew out of the ground, went to this little girl and never bit her, but he took her shoe off. That dog was gone that night because I won't allow it to be us to have an animal that has that. Yeah, kind of I don't want a mean dog. I got us the own. We don't want a mean dog either. If we thought the dog was mean, we would not all be here crying and fighting. No, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, that's the situation. We, we understand. Any other council comments or questions at this time? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another question. So in December, a, a rabbit was killed before this? And you didn't know about it? No, no, no we didn't. She told it, I think we she said it was on October. October. Well, prior to? But there wasn't a report. By the yet. same dog? In October. And we don't, the only way we knew that was a statement that she wrote. Well, but did you guys know that? No, no. we did not. Okay. First, I didn't know until uh, Officer Schaefer told us. This is the only one we've ever known of. That's so this we, is really like the second time it's happened. We don't know that. We don't know. You don't it, know, but it's the second time it's happened. We don't know if it was our dog, though. And we don't. It's am, I correct, time, so. am I correct that there are three other dogs at your house? They're not ours. They're not our dogs. We have a friend. Right. Those dogs so will be gone tomorrow. That's, we can't, yeah, we we can't say to. whether it was that particular dog that did it in October or not. Or probably those dogs and right. there's no actual report of, the, of a rabbit being killed. Correct. This is, this is on the report this time. This time. Okay. Yes. okay. We've had a Every couple of reports of your two instances of there of your dogs being loose. You didn't do anything after the first time to make I, sure I, that dog didn't get loose? I fixed the chain and I'm almost positive what happened was I was bringing wood in and she must have darted by me. I'm going to, you know, that's why I'm going to put the cage around the back door and around the garage door. We have so a garage, no a puppy door on our garage, and we will build a cage so she can go out that way, in and out of that dog door, so that she's not out in the open. There's no way she can get out anymore. That's what we're right after. Right now, we, we have a want. piece of wood in front of the dog door. She can't get through it at all. Is this door dog normally inside or outside? Inside. inside. She's an inside dog. dog. Unless she goes dog. out to go to the bathroom or he goes out to work, he'll take her out with him. She won't do that anymore. Anyway. Which, that's got to end, obviously. Do you have a picture of the dog? We do. That's your phone. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is, that, this, is it a dark colored dog? Yeah. Yes, it's a brindle oh, color. Really she's German. Yeah, Can I see? Can yeah. I? Uh, sure. Okay. She's Brindle Collier. She's German Shepherd Boxer. Are there any other uh, neighbors or concerned citizens who would like to address the situation? Yeah, I'd just like to say I, I'm obviously, you know, I'm part of the family, so um, I'm I would. Sorry, can you come to the podium? Sure. <laughs> they can't hear me. You but I'm loud now, so. Okay. Um, I am Grand's grandmother and Tyrell's mother. I would never let a vicious dog around my grandson ever. I mean, I we, we actually we only have a dog because I don't like dogs in town because dogs like to run, you know. And but this dog, even though it's big, it's inside. It's a lap dog. Um, 
he's great. He's great with the kids. I am really shocked about the rabbits. I raise rabbits. As Darshan knows, we went back and forth for many years. Um, they die for a lot of reasons, and I'm really shocked that this rabbit died from this dog. You know, I'm just, I just can't believe that this dog would do something like that. And of course, the rabbits will get replaced. I know where to get probably good, you know, I know how to get good rabbits for us, so I know that's not going to be a problem. And like Tyrell said, we'll get cages and everything else, you know, like that. So I'm sure that we can make amends with, with Darshan and our family. And I know how the boy feels because my daughter would have been heartbroken. I mean, she raised a lot of rabbits, and every time one died, you know, it's a tragedy. But you <coughs> move on, and you get more of them, and, you know, you do the whole cycle. I just wanted to, wanted to know that the dog is not a vicious dog. She's really a sweetheart, and I just hope that they're new in town, new family, new homeowners. Kids are going to our schools now. You know, just I hope you give them a second chance. This is this is what they need. You know, time to get the fence up. Get you know, yeah, the dog can go away until they can get proper. You know, we haven't had time. They haven't lived here that long to have time to get all this together. So maybe let the dog go away for a while and let them get their fence and everything done and let the dog come back. Thank you. Thank you. Just had a couple more comments. Um, the dog that I had the incident with is about the gentlest black lab you'd ever see. And it's just uh, animals are unpredictable. That's, you know, our, and I think we all can agree on that. I walked him out of the city limits and I let him run. He felt threatened one day and attacked a raccoon because the raccoon was coming towards me. I've never seen this dog raise his hair. So I'm just saying they are unpredictable. They One are. thing you might want to think about too, since the dog is young, if the council agrees, you know, to allow the dog to come back, you might want to look into some training because they do dart out. I understand that, and maybe a little discipline and a little instruction, and, and maybe you won't have that problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think at this time we're ready to entertain a motion. I would make a motion that we uh, table the decision on vicious and non-vicious um, until such time um, that the uh, family has a chance to, um, uh, to make uh, amends uh, financially, uh, totally, to uh, the uh, rabbit owner's family, the family that owned the rabbits, and uh, got sufficient uh, fencing to be able to have the dog in town, and if that doesn't happen, that the dog not be allowed uh, to be come back into hand. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion by Lukensmeyer to table uh, the decision on vicious or non vicious until certain conditions can be met. We'll have those conditions spelled out. We'll have uh, Police Chief Schaefer follow up. Uh, do we have any further discussion on that? I don't think that we can require anybody to make those kind of payments. Okay, we'll do a I think they indicated that they were. Yes, we did. So we can volunteerly do it. Yeah. We will volunteerly we will do give it. up it, our dog until we, we make the My sister corrections. will take her. She lives in Minnesota. She already said she will take her until we can get her back. If you guys will give us a second chance, we will get all that done. We've already planned on buying them rabbits and their cages. We've, we went to talk to them today. They weren't home. We've, we've, we are trying. We're all busy too, but we will get it done some way or another. So would we would we ask them that if they, this does when this does happen that they come the other family would come here too and say that their needs were met and then like um, you know Chief Schaefer would go over and make sure the fencing was adequate. I mean, is that how we would? I'd like that? to amend my motion to include that that the whatever specification specification agreed on layout are 
agreeable with the, uh, the Miller family? Well, I think I think the position before the council is just whether or not to table the decision of whether or not the dog is vicious or non-vicious for a period of time, and then we'll, we can revisit it, say, in 30 days, one month's time, whatever, whatever. I mean, you can include that in your motion when to revisit it. I think it's um, important that the dog be removed from town until that time. Is that within our legal rights? I would say so. So, that fit your second? Okay. Where's the dog now, Chief? Still at the vet. Still at the vet. I'm yeah, sorry. it's currently out of the vet center. <laughs> I might also add along with this, if, if we're going to go this route or whatever, uh, basically that the way that the uh, city ordinance reads is that under normal circumstances, had it not been aggressive toward an officer, and it doesn't really say if it kills an animal, but if it attacks an animal in twice within a year's time, that it is also deemed a vicious animal, okay? My only concern is, is that's great, they put up a fence or whatever, but if that dog will get loose again, um, you know, whether, whether it didn't do anything or whatever, but if it's running loose again, the only thing we're going to be able to do is go and give a ticket for running at large. Okay. So I just want to, you know, add that. Chief? Okay, so we have a, a motion uh, to table this. Uh, so are, are they allowed to remove the dog from the vet center and take it just so it's not in town until uh, the council readdresses this? That's however you want to have it done. Okay. I mean, um, if that's what you want to have done, that it's not there, then yes, they would have to go take it outside the city limits uh, or whatever until such time that they would have things done and then, you know, come to me or whatever. Um, and I guess my feeling is, is I would like to be able to address the council again as far as what actions have been taken, is there a pen there, whether I feel or not the pen is sufficient to keep the dog inside, uh, things like that, and then, and then you can determine what, what you want to do from there. I, the dog I mean, what's, to be. What, what's your feeling on that, I guess? That, am I understanding where you're going with us? And, You would be the chief animal control officer for the city, but I don't want to see you in charge of uh, being a cattle inspector. No, I don't. <laughs> I understand. And if the dog is vicious, one of the options is uh, just leaves town and doesn't come back. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the motion? I think it's wrong. Well, if it's wrong, what would you recommend? I would say based on the, the aggression showed towards the officers, I'm not willing to take it. Uh, I like dogs as much as the next people. I sympathize highly with these people. I understand it's a very emotional issue. But um, you know, a few seconds later, one of those officers could have killed that dog. Probably been justified. We wouldn't even been talking about this now. Uh, I understand where they're coming from. These are always highly charged and highly uh, emotional issues. Every time we've ever dealt with one of these. Val was here a number of years ago. Your situation was quite a little bit different in the respect that uh, people that were even dealt with being charged by your dog didn't have a problem with it. That weighed heavily on my or my, my decision. But this here, uh, I agree, I'll give Tyrell the benefit of the doubt. If a rabbit was said to have been killed in October and there's no proof, you know, I'm not doubting the lady, but we do need some physical proof. Mm -hmm. And i, I got to give him a pass on that one. But there has been a, a propensity for this dog to be loose, and the act of aggression is, is more than I'm willing to take a chance on. Okay, so we do have a motion on the table. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'd call for the vote. Can, can we just clarify what the motion is? Um, <laughs> the, mo the motion is to table a uh, decision on uh, whether it's vicious or non vicious. Uh, in, in my view, uh, the conditions are voluntary between 
the two parties. I don't think that's part of the motion. Um, but I, I think a 30-day time period it, it would be uh, added to uh, uh, revisit the issue. Is that what you're looking for? Yep, thank you. Okay. All right, we'll have the vote then. Uh, Arms. Nay. Uh, Davies. Aye. Lukensmeyer. Aye. Bogabak. Aye. Eckhart. Nay. Crawley. Aye. Motion to table carries. We'll revisit the issue in 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is consideration of approval of claims as submitted by staff. <clears throat> $112,163.55. Motion to approve the claim. So moved for approval. Motion by Diane. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dick. Any discussion on the claims? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is consideration of approval and adoption of uh, resolution and, uh, resolution 2013-01, a resolution authorizing acquisition of temporary and permanent easements from Arlen and Julie K. Arns. And I'll refer a reading of the resolution to City Manager Dunn. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas the City Council of the City of Hampton, Iowa, has heretofore authorized use of powers of eminent, eminent domain in a project known as the Wastewater Treatment System Improvement Project, and wherefore the City Council of the City of Hampton, Iowa, has heretofore found the project to be in the public interest, has authorized the use of powers of eminent domain, and found that there is reasonable expectation that the project will achieve its public purpose, will be completed, will comply with all the applicable standards, and obtain all necessary permits. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Hampton, Iowa, Section 1, the prior resolution regarding the authorization of eminent domain and finding there is reasonable expectation that the project will achieve its public purpose, will be completed, will comply with all the applicable standards, and obtain all the necessary permits is affirmed. The City of Hampton, Iowa has made a good faith effort to acquire the necessary property interest by negotiation and has been able to acquire it through good faith negotiation. As part of the project, the City Council hereby determines it is reasonable and necessary to acquire the following necessary property interest located in Franklin County, Iowa. A uh, permanent easement, 30 feet wide permanent easement for sanitary sewer purposes over, under, and across the part of warranty mm -hmm. deed described in instrument number 2007-0182 in the southeast quarter of the northwest quarter of section 34 Township 92, range 20 west of 5th p.m. Hampton Franklin County, Iowa, and further described as follows. Uh, and a temporary easement upon, over, under, through, and across <coughs> the described real estate as a temporary easement area which would be a 20-foot wide temporary easement containing 10,739 square feet, more or less, is a budding easterly uh, side of the above permanent easement to assist in the construction of the sanitary sewer. Section 4, Arlen A. Ahrens and Julie K. Ahrens as grantors in consideration of $836.47, another good and valuable consideration, agreed to grant, sell, convey to the City of Hampton as grantee a permanent easement upon, over, under, through, and across the above described real estate, together with the right of egress and ingress to and from the same real estate, and all the rights and privileges incident and necessary to the enjoyment of this easement, permanent easement area, and the temporary easement, upon, over, under, through, and across the above described real estate. Uh, also, a permanent easement, a uh, 30 foot wide permanent easement for the sanitary sewer purposes over, under, across the part of the warranty deed described in instrument number 041415 in the southeast quarter of the northwest quarter of section 34, township 94, 92 north, range 20 west, 5th p.m., Hampton, Franklin County, Iowa. Uh, description follows. And a temporary easement upon, over, under, through, across, followed, described real estate, 20 foot wide temporary easement containing 6,231 square feet, more or less, is abutting the easterly side of the above permanent easement to assist in the construction of the sanitary sewer. Section 6, Arlen A. Ahrens and Julie K. Ahrens as grantors in consideration of $487.03, and other good and valuable consideration have agreed to grant, sell, convey to the city of Hampton, Iowa as grantee. Permanent easement upon, over, under, through, and across the above described real estate, together with the right of egress, ingress to and from the same real estate, 
and all the rights, privileges, incident necessary to the enjoyment of this easement and temporary permanent easement and temporary easement upon, over, under, through, across, above the described real estate, section seven. As further consideration for the grantor's granting of the aforementioned permanent and temporary easements, the city will require the successful bidder on the project to adhere to the following conditions. A, where large trees are in direct conflict with the sewer line, they will have to be removed. Such trees will not be replaced as the city will need continued access to the sewer line for maintenance. B, all areas of construction are intended to be restored to pre-construction condition through grading and seeding. The C, the contract will include a two-year warranty requiring, among other things, that the contractor fill in any areas which may settle. D, a special area of concern is the newly planted area of trees on the north side of the project near Highway 3. To minimize disturbance of this area, trenchless methods of construction, including direct boring, will be utilized. This means the surface will not require disturbance except at the extreme south end of the planted area. It is anticipated that none of the trees in the newly planted area of trees on the north side of the project near Highway 3 will be disturbed. However, if any of the trees must be disturbed, they will be replaced with like species at the oldest age, which is commonly commercially available. E. During construction, contractor actions will be contained within the easement area to further minimize impact. F. Restoration efforts will repair damage done during construction to industry standards. Section 8. The City Council hereby accepts the attached easements and directs the City Manager to issue payment in the amount of $1,323.50 to the grantors. Thank you, Mayor. Everybody still awake? Is there any questions regarding this action? Okay. Take a motion at this time. Move to approve. Motion by the <coughs> Do I have a second? Second. Second by Val to approve resolution 2013-01. Uh, any further discussion? <coughs> Have the vote then. Crowley? Aye. Harms? Aye. Hogaback? Aye. Eckhart? Aye. Lukensmeyer? Aye. Davies? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is resolution 2013-04, resolution accepting work completed by Heartland Asphalt Incorporated for the Progress Park Improvements Project. I'll refer to reading the, res uh, the resolution to City Manager John. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2013-04, a resolution accepting work completed by the contract, completed by contract with Heartland Asphalt Incorporated, dated March 13, 2012, for the Progress Park Improvements Project. Whereas the Hampton City Council has accepted a bid from Heartland Asphalt Incorporated of Mesa City, Iowa, for construction of Progress Park Improvements, and whereas the city has entered into an agreement with Heartland Asphalt for said construction and improvements by contract dated March 13th, 2012, whereas Heartland Asphalt has completed the work on said contract, and whereas the city's consulting engineer, Clap Settle Garber Associates Incorporated, has stated that the work has been satisfactorily completed in general compliance with the terms, conditions, of the, and stipulations of the contract. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the work uh, on the Progress Park Improvements Project in the city of Camden is hereby accepted. Okay. Any questions regarding this project? Entertain a motion? <clears throat> I move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. second. Diane. Uh, motion by Dick and a second by Diane to approve and adopt resolution 2013 04. Any further discussion? I'd just like to say that it's great to be at this point. Um, we've got a great water park in town, uh, this progress park improvement, and the trails that we've uh, coordinated work on with the county are making some really nice recreational improvements for Hampton, which we'll be proud of. Anything else? Okay. Go forward with the vote. Lukensmeyer? Aye. Davies? Aye. Eckhart? Aye. Crowley? Aye. Harms? Aye. Hogaback? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is resolution 2013-05, a resolution accepting work completed by Heartland Asphalt Incorporated for the Progress Park Tennis Court, Basketball Court, and Skate Park Pavement Project. For reading of the resolution, the city manager John. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2013-05, resolution accepting work completed by the, by contract with Heartland Asphalt Incorporated, dated March 13, 2012, for the Progress Park Tennis Court, Basketball Court, and Skate Park Pavement Improvements. Whereas the Hampton City Council has accepted a bid from Heartland Asphalt Incorporated of Mesa City, Iowa for construction of Progress Park Tennis Courts, Basketball Court, and Skate Park Pavement Improvements, 
and whereas the city has entered into an agreement with Heartland Asphalt Incorporated for set construction and improvements by contract date March 13, 2012, and whereas Heartland Asphalt Incorporated has completed the work on said contract, and whereas the city's consulting engineer, Clap Settle Garber Associates Incorporated, has stated that the work has been satisfactorily completed in general compliance with the terms, conditions, and stipulations of said contract, and now therefore be it resolved that the work on the Progress Park Tennis Court, Basketball Court, and Skate Park Pavement Improvement Project for the City of Campton is hereby accepted. Any questions on this project? Entertain a motion. Will we approve? Have a second. Second. A motion by Jim and a second by Val to approve and adopt resolution 2013-05. Any further discussion? Go forward with the vote. Augerback? Aye. Arms? Aye. Davies? Aye. Eckhart? Aye. Lukensmeyer? Aye. Crowley? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is the consent agenda. Uh, including in the consent agenda is approving the previous minutes as drafted uh, from the Thursday, January 10th, 2013 regular session meeting. Uh, schedule the next regular session for Thursday, February 14th, 2013 at 6 p.m. at City Council Chambers. Approval of liquor licensing renewal for the wood cellar at 8 First Street Northwest in Hampton Island. Approval of liquor licensing renewal for get and go convenience store number 9 at 319 Central Avenue East in Hampton. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Uh, questions on the consent agenda? Take a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Dick and a second by Steve to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda is staff reports. Uh, first, Fire Chief Kent Wilkinson. Do you have yeah. He left. It took too long. Okay. <laughs> uh, Police Chief Bob Schaefer. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, City Manager. Uh, really don't have a whole lot to report uh, today, um, but due to the efforts of one of our citizens um, in trying to um, get a cat trap from the police department, and uh, the one that we have is always not available, she went and bought her own and uh, didn't catch the animal that she needed, and she donated the cat trap to the city. And in the process, evidently did some inquiring and found out from the company that uh, actually builds them down in Albia that they have seconds that um, they actually donate to the city. So we do have two more, so we will have a total of four. So uh, if we ever have any problems as far as people having uh, problems with cats getting into their yards or whatever, um, they, just like dogs, are supposed to be licensed and um, confined uh, or on a leash. Um, and another um, note, um, just want everybody to know that in light of the um, Newtown incident, uh, Chief Deputy Larson and myself did a presentation to the teachers at the high school uh, yesterday, and we'll be doing one to the teachers at the middle school and also the south side school uh, on active shooter. Uh, what our hope is, is that once uh, we also get trained, um, you know, uh, in entering a building, uh, if that would ever happen and, and pray to God that it never does but yet changed when uh, Columbine happened because back then you basically waited and the SOG team got there and whatever and then you went in well they found out that there's a lot more people that get killed when you wait to go in um, you know and usually on on a daily basis there's probably I mean today uh, there's myself the sheriff and Chief Deputy Larson that were actually, you know, working. Uh, there was a couple up in court, whatever, but um, if something like that would happen, there would be three of us to go initially and to go to get that shooter. So, I mean, that's part of the training that, um, you know, that we're going to get. And then after that, we would like to have a, uh, basically a training with the teachers at least um, so that they, you know, kind of prepared in case something like that would also happen. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. What time? What time are you going in? What's that? At the schools. 
I don't know for sure. We haven't got it set up for that Wednesday and stuff, so. Okay. Uh, Public Works Director Doug Tarr. Thank you, Mayor. It's cold out. That's the first time we report. Not that everybody doesn't already know that, but uh, anyway, we're just keep knocking on wood that water mains stay intact and uh, we keep moving forward. We've had one main break so far. Um, staff took care of that last week. It wasn't too bad. Um, but other than that, uh, it's kind of a long night so far. So does anybody have any questions or concerns about my report? Perfect. Thanks, Doug. City Manager Dunn? Nothing to report. Unless anybody has any questions. Uh, council reports. Uh, Diane Crawling? I actually don't have anything tonight. Who can find? I have uh, nothing. Really? <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to congratulate our city staff and Doug on the job well done on that water main break on Highway 3. You guys fixed that up in pretty short order for the conditions you had to work in, and good job. And got compliments. I see the crews going around and trimming some trees over the street. So if they wanted me to pass on my thanks, so we did. Good job. That's all I have here. Thank you. Steve Arms? Thank you. Uh, Tyrell, I want to pass on a little more information and I'll shut up. <laughs> um, I know it's very hard because I went through that like I told you with that lab. Yeah. And I voted nay, but the reason why I voted nay is because it did attack some animals, okay? It very easily could attack somebody else if it wanted to, okay? So the ball's in your court now. That's where we're concerned. We're not going to let her out of the yard or the house anymore. That's okay. That's all I have. Um, I would just like to say I appreciate uh, the chief doing the training with um, you know, potential shooters in our schools, not only as somebody that's in education, but for the community and for my own children as well. So I'd like to see that that type of action has been taken. And to kind of go along with Steve, and then I'll shut up. Um, I would, I just would like to one more time urge you to have some training done while the dog's gone. I think we'll do um, that. That's a very good it idea. It would be a, a great idea because it does concern me too. And she is young, so that's mm -hmm. what we'll be a good time to do it. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, thanks, Val. I believe on the 28th, the Live Healthy Iowa program starts. So if you're looking to get fit and well, take a look at that. There's a website for that. Thank you. That's all right. Website for everything. Um, and in my report tonight, uh, just to inform the council and the public, I did receive a call from uh, Supervisor Mike Nolte uh, earlier this week regarding a proposal uh, for the dispatch and communications. And uh, I don't have anything official or formal. Uh, he was going to uh, try to get something in writing to us uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, what he did tell me is that um, they are, uh, they'll be proposing uh, a county budget for dispatch of $280,000 as opposed to the 308000 the sheriff had uh, budgeted. Uh, the supervisors felt that they could get the same services and the same salary and benefits and everything in the $280,000. i am not sure on their math on that, but that's what he told me. Um, their proposal would be where the city would pay 40% of that cost, or $112,000. The city would also pay a per night fee for holding, the same as what the county pays the city now, is my understanding. Uh, dispatch employees would become uh, county employees under the uh, yet to be uh, the yet to be created communication commission at the same pay and benefits that they're currently earning. And um, his uh, projection is that the county levy would not increase under that proposal. So we look forward to something in writing from the uh, county attorney on that. Uh, and that's all I have. Uh, do we have any other uh, comments from the public at this time before we move to adjourn? Okay, we entertain a motion to adjourn now. So moved. Motion by Steve. Second. Second. Second by Diane. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed?
Mayor. Council will hold a budget workshop uh, meeting following this meeting, so in a few minutes, I will start. Thank you. All right.